Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be seeing how we can add authentication to our API gateway which is our reverse proxy with YARP. We're going to be seeing how we can add roles, custom policies and how we're going to be implementing those roles and custom policies into all of the services that our API gateway connects to. I'm Mohammed. if you want to learn more about .NET as or AWS, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Now let's jump into the code. So what I have here is based on our previous video where we have covered YARP in much more details, we have here the structure of our application where we have our main API, which is going to be our reverse proxy or our, or our API gateway connecting to different services. One of them is the orders, the payment, the user, etc, etc. So what we want to do today is we want to add the additional functionality onto our main.api to have authentication available to it. So what I'm going to do instead of connecting it to a third party authentication service, I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this main API to have authentication embedded in it. So basically we'll be able to use it from there. So now that we have understood what we're going to be doing here, so I'm just going to add a small box here saying here authentication. So once we add authentication, we're going to be seeing how we can actually attach policies to all of these services that are connected to our reverse proxy or to our API gateway. So now let's go to the code. So what I have here, I have a very simple implementation of a reverse proxy with YARP and all of these different APIs. So I have my main API, which is acting as my main reverse proxy endpoint. And I have all of these different services that are connected to it. I have already covered this in a previous video. So if you're not really sure about it, I'll connect it here somewhere so you'll be able to watch it. But basically it's a very simple implementation, basically propagating this where I have a reverse proxy web API and I have three different services which I'm able to connect to and every single one of them has their own unique functionalities. So if I go to the app settings.json, what I can see here, I have my reverse proxy configuration. I have two routes, one for orders, one for payments. And I have two clusters, one for orders as well, one for payments. Every single one of these clusters pinpoint to a specific address, which as we can see here, and these addresses is where those services are actually running. And for the routes itself, we can see here that I specified my cluster, which I want to utilize. I specified the matching of the URL that I need to actually take, and then where they're going to be forwarding based on the transformation and the pattern matching. So once I have done this for the order one, I also have implemented for the payments one, just so I can have two different services that are connected directly to my API gateway. So now what I want to do is I want to build on top of this and add authentication and authorization to this. And once I add all of this, then I'm going to see how we can actually implement custom policies for every single one of these routes based on whatever configuration that I have. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to my program.cs and I want to update this to include authentication in it. So we're going to start first by adding our authentication mechanism. So I'm going to put builder services dot add authentication. And then I'm going to add here the type of authentication. So I'm going to put bearer token default and I'm going to say authentication scheme. Then I'm going to say add bearer token. And this basically allows my application to know that I'm going to be utilizing authentication and I'm telling it that it's going to utilize the bearer token authentications. And I'm telling it here to add the tokens that I'm going to be utilizing to the default scheme. As simple as that. Then what I want to do is after my app is built here, I want to add two middlewares. The first one's going to be app.useAuthentication and the other one's going to be app.useAuthorization. And basically this will allow my middlewares that my authentication authorization use to be embedded into the pipeline of my .NET application, which is going to be my reverse proxy for them to be utilized. Now that I have done the foundation work, now what I want to do is I'm going to create an endpoint, which is going to be my login endpoint. I can also create a registration endpoint, but just to make this video uh, quite short, what I'm going to do is just going to create a login endpoint with some hard-coded credentials. Please don't do that. Uh, in real case scenario, this is only for demo purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up dot map post and I'm going to specify the path which is going to be login and then I'm going to specify the parameters I'm going to say it's going to take a string of username and another string of password which is going to be the credentials that they're going to be provided and then once we have that what I want to do is I want to validate the credentials so I'm going to say if username equal equal just say admin and password equal equal let's say pass here we're going to basically authenticate the user else we're going to return results dot unauthorized. So that's going to be the main thing. If they are authenticated, then we're going to be now we're going to go into the process of creating these token else. We're just going to return an empty uh, unauthorized response. So now once they are authenticated, what are we going to be doing? I'm going to return a results of sign in 
and I'm gonna define a new claims principle and inside this name claims principle I'm gonna define a new claims identity and within this identity I'm gonna define a list of claims so these can be new claim I can just say for example it's gonna be my ID for example and here I'm just gonna utilize a new go with dot to string my ID is gonna be go with new go with to string I can add another one new claim it could be for example the same timestamp it could be date time Dot, no, dot utc now dot to short date string and then that could be it we can add whatever claims that i want but this is going to be the basic ones that i want to utilize i can even add new claim let's say add the sub as well it can be go with dot new go to string i can add whatever claims that i want but basically here and i can even add the username so new claims i can say here username and add the username that i have okay perfect so now that i have these claims in place next i want to add the bearer talking defaults and i'm gonna say it's gonna take an authentication scheme so that's gonna be for this claims identity and lastly what i want to do is i want to define my authentication scheme and this is gonna be similar that we had before the bearer talking default dot authentication scheme and this is what i'm gonna be returning back to the user so in case they have authentic authenticated successfully I'm gonna return this else I'm not gonna be I'm gonna be returning unauthorized so I can actually remove this to make it a bit more cleaner so let's test it out so I'm just gonna open my terminal I'm gonna create three terminals the first one I'm gonna execute my main.api dot not run execute my order dot api dot not run and the last one is gonna be for payments okay so now I have my three application running this is still building yes it's running now I have my three application running let's go to postman and within Postman, what I want to do is I'm going to execute this. So now I'm going to click on send. And here, basically, right now, I have the right username and the right password. Actually, let's put first any random password. So I'm going to put password one. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a unauthorized request because this is not the right password. But once I put the right password and click on send, we can see here I'm getting my access token. And basically, this is the access token that I'm going to be utilizing to send all of my requests. So now how can i utilize this access token so just one thing i would like to point out here that this is an access token not a jwt token so just we need to keep this in mind so now what i want to do is i'm gonna go and add an order so now as we can see this is a simple order so now as we can see here if i click on send as you can see i'm able to get the response back this is not what we want because even though I did not add any types of authorization, the request has been still passed through. So how we can actually implement this authorization for this service, what we need to do is we need to go back to our source code. So let's go back to Rider, and I'm gonna go to my app settings. And what we need to do here is inside the route, I need to add the authorization type. So what I need to do here is I need to add the authorization policy. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna utilize the default authorization policy, which is called default. And this means basically it's gonna require every single request that's gonna be flowing through this application to be authorized. So now let's see what's gonna happen when I actually run this. And I go to Postman and I click on send. So now it's telling me that I need to add my, my token in order for me to process this request. So I'm gonna go to authorization. I'm gonna get a new token, click on send. I'm going to copy this token. I'm going to go to my post here and inside my headers, I'm going to add a new one, which is going to call authorization. And I'm just going to add my bearer token and click on send. And now, as we can see, I'm able to get a 200 because I was able to add the bearer token. If I remove the bearer token send, we got a 401. If I enable it, click send, we get the 200. OK, perfect. So now what I was able to do is actually I was able to propagate the requests from my API gateway to my services being authorized and everything. So what I was able to do is I was able to leverage all of my authorization implementation inside my .NET Web API here into YARP in order for it to actually force the services which is going to be receiving the request to be authorized. And all of this has been implemented with a few lines of code that I have added inside my program.cs in order for me to actually implement my authentication as well as implement them inside my middleware and actually able to utilize them inside my login process. Of course, this needs to be changed and it needs to be a proper login checks, but for now, for simplicity's sake, we're utilizing as hard code. So now that I have done this, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go back to my app settings here and I wanna implement the same thing for my other service, which is gonna be for payments. And now both of them will basically require the application to be authorized before the processes can be processed, before the request can be processed. Now, the second item that we wanna to cover today is how we can actually implement custom policies. And 
Within custom policies, I have a lot of different flexibility on what services. With custom policies, what I can do is I can actually force some rules that can be implemented on few services. Some of them will not have them and will allow me to have different level of authorization and authentication per service. So let's see how we can do that. So now what I'm going to do is after my add authentication, I'm going to put builder dot services add authorization and I'm going to specify the options and within these options here I'm going to add my policies so I'm going to add first a default policy and we can say options dot add policy I have to give it a name I'm just going to say an authenticated policy or I can call it access policy or whatever I want to be honest and here what I want to do is I want to define the default policy implementation or what will policy contain and I'm just going to say that as a simple policy I just want the user to be to be logged in so I can put dot require authenticated user and so this simply this will basically mean that any policy that it, this access policy is a the same as adding the default one here it means it requires the user to be authenticated the reason that I added this here so we can see how we can actually attach additional policies into this so we make it more customizable so what do i mean by that so for example what i want to do is i want to create here the ability to only for the admin to have the to add to the admin user to be able to connect to payments or for the customer's user to have access to orders so that's the role that i want to actually attach to all of these different requests so a customer will not going to be able to check the payments for some reason only they will do the orders and only admin will be able to do the payments so let's see how we can implement this level of authentication so what i want to do here is i'm going to add a new policy i'm going to call it user policy and just for simplicity's sake i'm just going to copy this i'm going to call this customer or user access and what I want to do here is after I initiated that the user needs to be authenticated I'm going to attach additional functionality and this one is going to say require claim and within this claim what I want to do is going to say the the claim needs to have a role and this role needs to be user so in case this claim has a user policy they will be able to access the user if they don't they will not and I'm going to create another one right now and this is going to be for admin so I'm going to say admin policy and here I can say admin and here I'm going to say admin so now what I want to do is in order for me to utilize these and let's pay close attention to this I'm creating inside .NET so I'm just going to take the name of these policies so user access and this is going to be for orders I'm going to go to my app settings and add them here so inside my order uh, route, I'm going to add my custom policy here. And inside my for payments, I'm going to take this, go back to my app settings and add them for payments. So now that I have this in place, well, now what we need to do is we need to update our login in order for us to have the roles or the new claim enabled. And an easy way to do that, I can don't do this. This is only for demo. I'm just going to add a new parameter. I'm going to call it role. And I'm going to say by default, it's going to be equal to user. And this is not the place that I want to add. I want to add it here. It'll be string role. And it's going to say equal to user. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a new claim. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to say this is going to be the role. And here is going to be whatever role I pass. And this is going to be the main thing. So by default, it's going to be user. Unless being overridden, it's going to be an admin. So now let's run this and see how it's going to work. So now inside Postman, I'm going to go back to my login. And as we can see, I have did not specify any role. And I'm going to send a request. So now we can see I got a new token. I'm just going to take this token. And I'm going to go to my create, which is going to be for orders. So now I'm not going to add any role. I'm just going to requ request. So now basically I got a token and by default it took the user role and now I'm going to go to my orders and I'm not going to attach anything. I'm just going to attach the normal better token that I just got and I'm going to send the request and we got 200. Now if I go to payment and we do a request, we got a 401 unauthorized. If I add now the header and it's going to be bearer, sorry, I'm going to be authorization and we're going to put here bearer. Let's copy the access key again so i can just copy it, whatever i have here this needs to be here and now send now we can see we got a 403 forbidden because basically with that i'm not able to call this because the role is by default a user but now if i go back here and i add the role and make it as admin and click on send now we got a new access token if i copy this go back to my get request update my authorization token for the payments i click on send now we can see i got the payments response successful if I use the same one for the orders one and I try to remove this from here, this is the old one and add the new one. 
Now this should be come back as a forbidden because this only match for the admin, it does not match for the user. So as we can see, I was able to identify and add different types of policies based on the services I'm currently utilizing. So this has been a very quick video on how we can actually implement authentication and authorization to our API gateway with Yarp and .NET. We have seen how we can actually leverage the built-in functionality of .NET with authentication and authorization and policies in order for us to implement different policies for different services that Yarp is actually routing the request to. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help the channel. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.